When it comes to photography equipment, what do you think holds you back the most? Is it your camera, your sensor size, your lenses, your tripods, your lights? And even though those are all important pieces of photography equipment, it's actually none of those. It's your camera bag and what you're willing to carry. Doesn't matter if you have a bunch of lenses, a couple flashes, and a tripod. If you're not taking all this gear with you, it's not really gonna help you take a better photo, is it? If you've been in the photography game for a while now, you quickly realize how fast your gear collection starts to grow. If I haven't made this obvious yet, not everything is gonna fit into one bag. If your bag is too small, you're gonna be leaving a bunch of equipment behind. And if it's too big, well, no one likes carrying these things either. This is why photographers always end up having way too many bags. Why do I need this many bags? <laughs> I actually do. I don't have strong enough traps for this. This might be your ticket to convincing your partner that you need a new bag. Cause there is no one perfect bag. Now, let me just be honest here. A bag is a bag is a bag. A bag is just a tool that is designed to carry things from point A to point B. And realistically, any bag can be a camera bag. The only thing differentiating a good camera bag from a bad camera bag is how much it can carry, what's made out of the aesthetic, but most importantly is how easy is it to actually access your stuff. You see, I believe a good camera bag shouldn't just be something that you use to carry your gear around. It should allow for good, quick access for your equipment. Otherwise, it's just a bag. There's so many times where I'll be walking around and I wanted to grab my camera out of my bag or even just swap lenses. By the time I was able to fish whatever I wanted out of my bag, it would already be too late. The moment would already be over. This is why I believe if you can't get your camera out within 10 seconds, it's not really a camera bag. It's just a bag, which is what all these premium camera brand bags are. Just fancy, expensive bags with built-in organization features. What camera bags do you actually need? Well, before you end up like a bunch of us gearheads out there, it really depends. The needs of a wedding photographer with two camera bodies, eight lenses, and a handful of speed lights is completely different than someone just needing an everyday backpack. Maybe you just want the bare essentials of one camera body, one lens, and maybe a few accessories. Or maybe you bought a drone and now your current bag is too small for it. So you buy a dedicated bag for your drone too. And that's just it. Every case is so situational. But depending on what I'm trying to do and for how long, we'll decipher which bag I'll usually gravitate to. But more or less, all these bags can be broken into four use case scenarios. Everything else is just kind of like a subcategory of these four. You can decide which camps you're in and buy accordingly. First, we got essential bags, which are gonna be small bags that hold simple kits. One camera, one lens setups, or just small light setups in general. These are usually my go-tos, unless I need to carry some other big item. Otherwise, tripods can actually be strapped to the bottom of these bags usually. Then we got everyday bags, which are gonna also have everyday features like laptops and tablets and other things like that. I tend to see these more like a laptop bag first and then a camera bag as a second thought. The only time I ever use this as a dedicated camera bag is only when I need to carry other items like a drone or action camera, and I don't wanna carry a big bag. These next two bags are a little bit hardcore but then again most photographers are hardcore so you'll probably end up getting these ones too Whew. we have hiking and travel bags these can either be dedicated camera bags for carrying lots of gear or split use for carrying other things such as clothes or sleeping bags or anything you might need to survive in the wild I know I was just holding a different bag, but this bag has a better support system to prove my point. These bags are usually gonna be way more advanced and gonna have things like a suspension system or ventilation for your back along other things. These are gonna be features that prioritize comfort for long excursions over everything else. And then we got gear bags, which is carrying a bunch of gear from point A to point B. And this is more for professional work or People don't want to leave anything behind, but these are very inconvenient to use other than carrying a bunch of gear. <laughs> and that's pretty much the four main use cases. Otherwise, it kind of just comes subcategories of these. Overall, a bunch of bags can fit under multiple categories, but it really depends on how much you want to carry and how easy it is to access your gear, which is really dependent on the actual bag type itself. Really, there's only three bag styles and only two of them really matter. The third one is kind of just only if you're really, really, really hardcore. Sling bags are really my favorite bag. And not only just because they're small and lightweight, 
example on how they operate. I mean, just look at this. Look how easy this was. I can swing this around my body willy nilly and just grab my camera out. And if I need to switch lenses, it's like a little shelf in front of me all the time. And now I can change lenses without having to ask anyone or stopping or putting anything down. Out of all the bags, these are gonna be the fastest bags for swapping equipment and getting things in and out. If you end up getting a sling bag, you might also wanna be looking for a bag that has a mounting point for a capture clip on the side. These allow you to clip your camera to the side of your bag and forego a camera strap altogether. Like, check that out. Look at that. Easy, peasy, ready to go. However, this really only works on smaller shoulder bags. The drawbacks of sling bags is if you get one that's too big, it's very easy to overload with weight, which is how I felt about my 15 liter Peak Design bag. This was my very first camera bag ever. And this can easily hold five huge camera lenses, but it's just too much weight and just hurts to use for long periods of time. So which is why I wouldn't recommend anyone getting a bigger sling than 10 liters. Battery's dying, I need to change it out. Okay, and we're back. The next style is gonna be backpacks. When it comes to convenient access, backpacks are just not that great. One thing I see commonly across most backpacks is getting your camera out is not that bad, but when it comes to changing out lenses or grabbing anything else, it's a whole procedure. You have to take the camera bag off and then actually get access to everything which if you're walking around with a bunch of people, you're constantly stopping the whole group to, well, change lenses. And then two minutes down the road, you're gonna do the exact same thing again. And it's just very cumbersome. And even when it comes to side access, it's usually not that great either. Because grabbing your camera out is one thing. Sitting here trying to swap lenses feels a lot more cumbersome and these are small lenses, but if I had bigger lenses, I usually have to ask for help or ask for a hand. And that's my thing about all these backpack designs is that even though they have a lot of space, if you don't put it back in the exact configuration, it's very hard to put lenses and camera back into the bag very willy nilly. And it's this oversight that makes me really not like using camera backpacks. It's just not really that well thought out. But there is this one outlier bag that I wanna bring up and this is not a sponsor or anything, but I don't wanna bring up any products that I don't endorse. And this is not something I'm sponsored for, but this bag has a whole feature set that I just haven't seen in any other bags and I want more bags that do this. So now that I put it on, it kind of just looks like a regular backpack, right? Well, you're wrong because it's not a regular backpack. It's a revolving backpack. And it does this. What? What did you just witness? This is my favorite hiking bag and I just discovered it this year and it's the Mindshift Revolution bag. This is like the previous version. I didn't buy this bag new. I got this bag used from KEH. I'm super excited to use this bag because it's basically like a backpack but it's also kind of like a fanny pack at the same time. Pouch, full of gear. And when I want to put it away, it just slides back in to the bag. And then this has a magnetic attachment or whatever. It's not a bag review. This is not a bag review, okay? I just want to show you that I hope more camera bag manufacturers pick up on this design. Like a Peak Design made a bag like this, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Just sick. And another feature I wish more camera bag brands picked up was Molly, which is these things. The reason why I like this bag so much is because of these Molly points here. If I need more storage capacity or more organization, I can just clip these quick release pouches on and just expand my storage in less than half a second. And the best thing about Molly is that it's a standardized attachment system. So I can just pick up whatever pouches I need, like sunglass pouches on Amazon and just throw them on my bag and they're ready to go at any time. It's just something I wish more camera bags had because now if I want to clip on my filters, I can just Molly clip those on and take them off when I don't need all my filters anymore. If I needed one more extra lens attachment point, I could attach an extra lens pouch, throw it in, and then when I don't need more lens storage, I can just unclip that. So sick and I fell in love with this bag and now it's become my go-to everyday bag, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, there really is no one bag fits all solution, but there is one little hack that I can give you that may get away with 95% of them, 
and it's just one bag that does everything. And I actually showed you this bag already, but I'm gonna show you how you can use this bag in multiple situations. I think most photographers, unless you're a massive gearhead, will be perfectly served with a small three to 10 liter sling bag. And the reason why I say a three to 10 liter sling bag is because, well, these are basically can be used as a packing cube. And you can easily insert these into any of your other bigger backpacks. But these fully function as their own independent camera bags. Honestly, even three liters is a lot of space. In this bag alone, there's an A7R5 with a 35 F2, a 90 mil lens, a, let's see, a 10 mil lens. And to boot that off, I still have a spare batteries and a compact flash in here. This is a full size kit and a three liter bag. Just imagine how much I can do with 10 liters. And this easily will fit into any of my backpacks and it's a full size travel cube ready to go. Because of the simplicity of just being able to use this as a packing cube, I think this makes way more sense than an everyday camera bag. Now, if I want to use my camera bag as a camera bag, I can just leave the fluff of all the laptop stuff and everything behind in my other bag and just take this bag with me. Just my tip in case you're just starting out and you only want to get one bag for every situation. Otherwise, when you become a gearhead, you're going to end up getting a ton of bags. Or if you don't want to be the photographer of 10 bags, just keep your kit simple and you'll never need to get more bags. So easy as that. <laughs> Or if you can't help yourself and just want to keep stuff in your bags, you should check out this video where I talk about my 15 favorite camera accessories. Or consider following this channel because there's going to be lots more content. Until next time, ciao.